Yeah, it's that big. It needs both sides of my side by side. <laughs> Coffee and a camera. Aha. So here we've gone back to my nice creek area where the creek is running nice and low at the moment. But I'm gonna take the excavator down here and just do a little bit of digging. You know, here I've been making videos on YouTube for 13 years and it dawned on me after all these years I've been focused on RC so much, you guys really don't know the person behind the camera. And I think it's about time that I start letting you know who I am. That is a heavy excavator. This is like a super private area on our property which is like far away from anybody. So welcome. Here's a beautiful creek right now. Usually has some pretty high flow through here, but it's nice and low. And look at all this beautiful red sand in here. It's a little bit later in the afternoon. Well, it's actually early evening but I thought the excavator has some lights on it. Might as well uh, fire it up and drive it down the uh, berm here and uh, chat and get digging. When you spend $10,000 on an item, you want to use it. And uh, I definitely want to do that today, get some practice in. Ah, oh, never fits. <laughs> Made for a beer can only. Here is my fly sky. Do you want to transmit? Yes, I want to transmit. Your switches need to be in the up position. They are in the up position. And everything is ready to go. It is on excavator. Yes, I am getting a, uh, a twin stick with rotary dials on it. The new EV from fly sky. The battery is in here, full charge on the battery. Dude's ready to go. If you guys have never seen this, yes, the inside uh, screen works. It tells me the pressure and temperature of the oil. And the lights are on, good to go. Might as well fire it up. Turn the volume up to the sound kit. It's ready to rock, turn on the pump. I haven't mixed it. So there, we're ready to rock. Give you guys kind of a back view here. bucket in and then tracking forward adjusting my arm <laughs> just like full size guys figure here is nice look at the precision people are like why did it cost so much money look at when I move the slew ring around there's barely any movement it's precise most rigs are very sloppy this way That's cool guys, look at that. What a beautiful machine. Nice. Put 
a beautiful machine. All right, so I'm going to leave the uh, sound kit off just so we can kind of chat to each other here because I think that my voice is reaching a lot of people when I'm chatting about some things here. And I think a lot of people can relate to some of the stories that we have all been through. And to hear it from somebody else may help you in your journey. I don't know, especially while we're doing a, a video like this. Eh? <laughs> Listen, when I was younger, I'm 44 now. And it may look from my channel like I've got the greatest life and that I've, you know, had a great adventure. And I certainly have in life. I've had a wonderful adventure. Uh, but it did not come at, at, at no cost or free is what people would normally think. Um, I, I would like to consider myself a, a self-made man, uh, if I can even say that coming from the bottom to get to what I would call is my top, to where I'm actually happy. What does that mean, I guess? Let's start off when I was young. I guess to really kind of understand a man's path, you have to understand a man's experiences, and you can't really understand experiences until the person actually shares it with you. And none of these stories are a oh, woe is me story. This is just a story or stories that I tell to help people understand that they're not on their own. They're not just, you know, doing this and thinking that no one's done it before them and that there's no way out. There's always a way out. This might not always be the option we want. I think it was Mick Jagger who said, you can't, can't always get what you want, but you can get what you need. You always get what you need. Let's say that I was the product of a single parent, um, a single mother, uh, where my dad uh, was an alcoholic and my mother decided to leave him when I was quite young, uh, about two years old, I believe. And uh, it was a struggle for me. I, I didn't understand, like most kids, where my dad had gone. He was an, an alcoholic and abuser. Um, and there's, you know, like he says, a different story. I don't know my dad personally. Uh, after all these years, the last time I saw him was 20 years ago. And I never had a relationship with him as I grew up. He was the absent father, uh, the deadbeat dad, as you'd say. He tried when I was older, but uh, he just didn't have the mental fortitude to be able to take an already damaged kid and to, to help that kid, you know, turn his life around. So uh, when that happened, you know, my mom didn't have an easy go of it. I didn't have an easy go of it either. Everybody has a story. I can say that, uh, that uh, my mom being a single parent and trying to put herself through school and all that stuff, as well as working, she wanted to be a social worker and a family therapist. And uh, fuck, that was hard as a child, you know, to try to deal with that, uh, especially as an angry young teenager. Uh, where I wasn't a very liked kid when I was younger. Um, my dad taking off or us leaving too early or my dad making the decision to be with another woman and start a family and ignore me um, turned out to be fairly typical. But, you know, I thought back in the day when I was that young that it wasn't typical. And so I, I thought, you know, I wasn't wanted by my dad or whatever. And I, I went on to try to do different things, but I wasn't a very popular kid in school. Um... I, I, I was the kid that was usually beat up. My mom always taught me that it was best not to hit somebody uh, and to go and tell the teacher, which is a horrible fucking thing to tell your kid, especially a boy, because a boy needs uh, to find a little bit of strength in, in learning how to fight and learning how to punch and how to take a punch, and both verbally and physically. Because even though we're in a, in a hurt society lately that can't handle any violence, any real violence, you know, things were handled differently when we were younger. And in society as a whole, we've kind of gotten soft where we rely on police and all that instead of our own, instead of our own uh, ways because that's the way the government wants it and, and kind of dic dictates it to us that way. Anyway... Long story short, I found myself on my own. My first attempt to kill myself when I was 14 years old. And I tried to overdose on pills. I was so sad at that time. Uh, and my, my Aunt Val had died. My whole family was in disarray. Um, 
my grandparents, you know, like weren't a very loving set of grandparents. My mom was, was struggling from family stuff she had earlier in her life. And, you know, like there was just a whole bunch of fucking bullshit and baggage that every family seems to go through that's dysfunctional or special these days. And there's so many people now, there's just so many fucking families that are like that. It's expected to be kind of the norm, which is kind of sad and sickening in its own way. But I also got to say that when I was on my own, uh, first came the suicide attempt, my mom trying to go through school, my Aunt Val had died, and uh, her two kids, uh, two daughters, had come to live with my mom in a condo uh, that she was trying to pay off while she was going to school, and while she was a, uh, you know, had a job in, I don't want to say where it is, just because that's all private stuff, but you know, like, she was working for the government in child services. And uh, it's so funny because here it's just like a, a cop has a kid that breaks the law uh, or, you know, like a firefighter that has a kid that's a pyromaniac. Here I was in, in my mom in social welfare and I was about as dysfunctional as it got. I used to do self-cutting and self-harm when I was young and it was because I felt a lot of pain when I was 13. I would cut my legs, I would cut my arms, and I remember trying to teach myself to try to feel like I was enjoying the pain so I, I could feel some control in my life of what was going on. And uh, you guys are probably like, what the fuck, where did this story come from? But my life has been long, and although you see that there is lots of what you guys would call success, it didn't come for free. It came with a lot of hard work, self-awareness, self-change, uh, habit-breaking, habit-forming, and, uh, you know, it, it comes early. So when I say I was on my own at 14, when my mom actually had to take on the kids and she was under a great deal of stress and lost her best friend in her sister... That really devastated my mom and she went into a deep depression. And I saw someone who was normally bright and vibrant, you know, kind of kind of take on a, a deep depressed sadness and a sadness that I had never seen before, even though we had been sad and, you know, we didn't really have any money because of being a single parent and my mom trying to go to school and try to work, you know, and having a kid that was going through his own issues and problems at school and and not performing well at school and then, you know, always being scared of people at school. I was afraid of going to school. I hated going to school. It was not a place of pleasure for me and learning. It was a place of torture, basically. I had my nose broken when I was uh, 14. I had my ribs broken. There's some people listening right now that are like, yeah, finally, someone broke this asshole's ribs. <laughs> and then there's some other people that understand what it, it's like to be a bullied kid and tortured for years at a time, and it sucks. Look at me right now. I know there's people here right now that look at me and go, what the fuck, you look like a freak. Good, I'm glad you think I do. It's also hiding this fucking monster zit I got for you, but at least I'm still young enough to be getting them. And here I am out practicing out here, and all those kids that are watching my show, that the parents are realistic to let their kids watch this show and know that I'm speaking the honest to gosh life experience of what life is like. Know that you can get through these incredibly difficult times. Know that if you're being picked on in school, when you go back to school right now, that every kid is weird. Every kid feels um, insecure. Every kid lacks self-confidence. Even the biggest kids that are in school right now, the jocks, those guys, they also have a lack of self-confidence. Now, some, granted, some of them are just dick bags and douches, and there's nothing you can do about that. Um, except just learn how to stick up for yourself and believe in the truth that nerds actually rule the world. Uh, geeks and nerds and people that are passionate about their stuff have ways to capitalize and to make it in this world. Uh, look, at, I made a career partially out of playing with uh, really cool radio control hobby toys because of YouTube. I've made some smart investments, I've made some smart business moves along the way, but at the same time my core competency was to always show off a hobby that I find fabulous and fascinating to people uh, and, and it came from a total nerd, someone who thought he wasn't worth living on a few occasions in my life uh, and I thought I was going to end it. And I attempted on a few different times to do that and I'll tell you what, I would have missed out on all of this.
I'm only quiet because I want you to kind of have that as a resonating moment. I wouldn't have met my wife or my girlfriend, who's to be my wife now, who is my wife now. I wouldn't have had my beautiful son, Morris. I wouldn't have had this great excavator. I wouldn't have had this huge fan base and following. I wouldn't be able to have a platform where I can speak about cool RCs and everyday normal life, you know, challenges to the people that are listening out there. I would have missed all that. My calling would have been gone and I would have thrown it away. Now, I don't blame people that decide to throw the towel in. Unfortunately, that is their choice to do that. That is sometimes the only type of control you have, which is kind of like what I was talking about when I was doing self-harm in my young, young days. And I hope to gosh right now that you are not bleeding in your heart, that you're feeling like you have to do that. And if you do, make sure to talk to somebody because you've got to get that sadness out. I look at it a lot like a bucket, right? If you've got a bucket full of sadness, you've got to tip some of that stuff out. And you know what? Crying is the best way to do it. I don't care what they say about uh, dudes uh, that aren't allowed to cry because it's weakness. No, weakness is just... Is, is, just a figment of what society says these days, eh? It's not anything other than, than, than mach, machismo bullshit that's out there. I know, I'm talking. I didn't even smoke it. It's just sitting there, gone out. I know, I'm just shooting straight goods here. Talking too much again. You get me started talking to the kids and all the adults out there that need me talking to them, you know? Uh, RC becomes a little less important. Let's, let's, let's change the view here. Let's go over here. There, we can dig from here. Take a moment to get outside and enjoy myself while I could here, hey? Maybe spend it with you guys. Maybe it's raining where you are. Or maybe you're not able to, to get outside and play right now for whatever reason because of storms or hurricanes or, or geopolitics or, or whatever the heck is going on in your area. All I can say in this world right now is you got to do you. And make sure, you know, like... I do my best not to tell people what to do because who the fuck am I to tell anybody what to do? Everybody lives in different cultures. Everybody lives with different governments. Everybody has different cultures and rules. One rule doesn't apply to everybody, guys. And so when I say to folks, you know, like, get outside and play with RC, I just mean it basically is get outside and be good to one another or be at least good enough to yourself. You do you. Focus on you and the rest will follow. That's what I've always thought about my YouTube channel. Do it because I love it, and the rest will follow. And that's always been what's happened. Those lights look awesome. Everybody says, can you do gold in the dark so we can see the lights? And the answer is no. Nobody wants to come and, and be in the dangerous uh, dark because it is dark out there. But here, I can take you out and give you a good look at the lights right now. Look at that. It's not mining for gold, but you know what? I definitely need to take a, uh, a wash plant down here and have a look at this. We gotta run some of this through, because if there's rocks in this old uh, creek formation down here, and no one's panned this, <laughs> Now, Nova Scotia has a huge history. I'm sure somebody's panned it by now, but I still wanna get the machines down here just to check it out. Unfortunately, this is not an easy access area to get lots of people down here. It's like bring three people at a time, that's about it. Yeah, I was out on my own when I was 14. Uh, when the kids moved into uh, the condo, they, one was older than me and one was uh, about seven years younger than me. And uh, I was already going through some serious issues in school. I was failing my grades. I didn't want to be there because I was mostly scared and being tormented. And I wasn't punching people back because I honestly felt back in those days so angry. I felt that if I actually had punched somebody in the face, I was worried I was going to kill them. Now that, that was before UFC. That was before all that stuff. This is back in the early 90s. Yes, I'm dating how old I am, but that's the way it goes. And uh, I learned over time, of course, you can punch people in the face several times, more than likely, and you're going to be just fine. Um, you know, of course, uh, you know, that worry goes away after a while. But as you get older, the punches to the face kind of happen less and less because you get smarter and you realize what's really important in life. You know, family, health, well-being. Anyway, when I was out on my own, I ended up being in a, uh, a shelter when I was 14, where it was a shared shelter. Ah, I'm sliding into the water. A shared shelter called Avenue 15. 
Avenue 15 was a drop-in center for boys and girls, and they would boot you out at six in the morning to go and look for a job. Ugh, look at this, I'm sinking. And then you'd be allowed back in for food at around 5 p.m. that night. Woo, I'm sinking. Yeah. Yeah. Look at this. <laughs> yeah. Nice and soft. Somebody said, don't exaggerate your life when you're telling these stories. <laughs> There's no exaggeration, man. This shit actually happens to people. Happens to more people than I think a lot of people, people realize, and that's why I even bother mentioning it. I think a lot of people can relate to being on their own young I think a lot of people can relate to actually being addicted to drugs when they're young. I think a lot of people can relate to doing drugs changing their life. You know, I heard today in Canada that they're actually making a bill right now, uh, or a study at least, to see that they want to decriminalize possession for small amounts of any drug just to unburden the whole system of, of people that are addicted to drugs or people that have just been busted for like a small possession charge. There's so many people in prison right now that just wanted to have a good time on Saturday night. Not be addicted, not to do a whole bunch of stuff, but just to be in trouble. And then they have a criminal record for the rest of their lives. Does that make sense? Let me know in the comments section, people. Uh, if you like the video, you know what to do. Thanks a lot for tuning in. We'll see you in the next episode of RC Adventures. Well, RC Life Adventures? I guess that's what it's turning out to be today, isn't it? Fuck this excavator is epic. Awesome. Now I get to start it up since I'm, I'm going off camera!